one of the best things about listening to music on vinyl, in my opinion, that it forces you to actually sit down, pay attention to the music. It's an excuse to relax, to take a break. There's no better time to do that than on Sunday morning. I'll break down my 10 perfect Sunday morning spins this episode talking about records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, small chain of independent record shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you're in the United States, you can shop online at ntxvinyl.com and of course would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button here on our YouTube channel. Follow us across social media on Facebook, Instagram, and now even TikTok. Sunday morning, what a great time to spend records. Most people are at home, most people are relaxing or at least trying to. Um, and at least you've got the morning maybe to have a cup of coffee and chill. So what better time to put on a record that you can listen to and enjoy maybe with your family or by yourself. Um, that's what I like to do. And, um, and I picked out a few records that I have typically spun on a Sunday morning. These are obviously just the tip of the iceberg. But just went through my collection, kind of eyeballed um, a couple of artists that I uh, gravitate towards on Sundays. Um, you know, I didn't try and uh, be particular about genre, so I just went through all the different uh, stuff in my collection and pulled out some that I thought had a good vibe, and again, that I kind of know that I've spun before on a Sunday morning. So let's kick this off with a band that I actually just saw live recently. Um, this is Lost in the Dream by The War on Drugs. Uh, this is their 2014 release. Um, I think it's their third record. It's the one that got me into the band. It was kind of my introduction to them. I'd heard of the band, of course, their name being kind of unique, uh, but it never really uh, checked into them until I heard this record. Um, Under, Under the Pressure is a big song for them. That's uh, the kickoff track here, the leadoff track. Red Eyes is a fantastic song. Eyes to the Wind, maybe my favorite song on this record. It's a very atmospheric, chill album which uh is kind of a thread that's going to go through a lot of these in regards to you know wanting to kind of sit back and relax on a sunday morning but the instrument tri instrumentation is great on this record the songwriting is great um and it just has a really great vibe that i think fits on a uh, on a weekend morning when you're looking to relax um but don't get me wrong this this band can really bring it live um and on you know some of the records as well um even though it's they've got a very kind of chill vibe here um, they they can uh, they can get loud and it's a fantastic show. If you haven't caught them live, I would highly recommend it. Phenomenal musicians um, and I think a lot of that really stands out on this record, which is what really attracted me to it. I've gone back and listened to the earlier stuff and have most of their discography now, but this one uh, this one always stands out. And I just think again, looking at it, I think it's got a, a Sunday morning vibe. Everything from the visual down to the uh, the aesthetics of the music. So. Love this album. Um, it gets a lot of a lot of play on my turntable, and like I said, a lot of times on a, a time like a Sunday morning when I'm just looking to relax because it's got that uh, got that feel to it. So check on check out War on Drugs, Lost in the Dream. If you're not familiar, again, this was a uh, 2014 release, and I think uh, most of their stuff. Um, is still in print a little bit. This one may be a little harder to find right now, but hopefully it'll stay in print. They're still a very active band, so that means most of the time they're going to continue to repress that back catalog. So that's the first one on the list. Second one on the list, this is uh, the only soundtrack on the list. And I think a soundtrack is a great way to start off a Sunday morning because it's kind of like a mixtape. Um, this is the 2004 film, 2004 film Garden State. Um, the soundtrack did not come out on vinyl until until 2014. Uh, this is the music on vinyl pressing. There is a standard pressing as well, so it's still uh, still pretty read readily available, which I love uh, because it is such a great soundtrack. Um, this is uh, uh, written and produced, I believe, by Zach Braff. Features Natalie Portman, um, and like most of Zach Braff's uh, mo movies, music play a huge role in the film, and I think they really do propel this film from a good good movie to a great movie because of the soundtrack. 
You've got the Shins, you've got Colin Hay, you've got Nick Drake, you've got Simon and Garfunkel and Iron and Wine, you've got Coldplay. Just a great mix of songs. He does such a fantastic, Zach Braff uh, does such a fantastic job curating music for his movies. Um, this is, I think, the best example of that. Um, there's not even a, there's a, a handful of artists like I just named that I don't even have a lot of albums from. I just know the songs from this record because it's such a beautiful mix. Um, they fit really well together. And it's one of those soundtracks that again, front to back, there's not a bad song and it really meshes well, which I think is what makes a good soundtrack or a good mixtape. And so perfect for a Sunday morning, all very chill and relaxed. Um, and I think again, just uh, having the variety of a lot of different artists is what makes a what makes a good soundtrack um, uh, an enjoyable listen. So perfect for a, a Sunday morning, in my opinion. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I saw it recently, um, and I hadn't seen it before that in probably I don't know ten or fifteen years. Uh, it holds up pretty well. Pretty funny movie. Um, a little depressing at times, but uh, but a great uh, uh, a great film. Uh, really well written, and again, the music being integrated really really well, which is what I love about. Most of the movies I love have great soundtracks because that's what draws me to them. So and this is a good example. So check out Garden State soundtrack if you're not familiar with that one. All right, next on the list. This is an album that came out in 1992. Um, it did not get released on vinyl until 2017. It was probably the first one I thought of when I thought of this idea for a video. If I'm thinking of perfect Sunday morning spins, the subtleness of Harvest Moon by Neil Young is a no-brainer. Uh, tracks like Unknown Legend from Hank to Hendrix, One of These Days, the title track, it's just beautiful. I love uh, just about every different era and style that Neil Young has, uh, has attempted over the years. This one being probably my favorite when he strips it down to just an acoustic and just the harmonica. Um, it is just absolute perfection to my ears. This is the long overdue follow-up to his obviously classic album, Harvest, which came out, um, you know, early 70s. Um, thank God that he reprised it. You know, I think he did, this was a little bit of a jab at, um, at Geffen Records. He went through a rough period in the mid 80s, going into the 90s with Geffen, where they wanted him to, uh, they wanted him to put out Harvest Part 2 and Part 3. And he was not having it. So he waited till he left the label uh, years later and then did the proper follow-up to Harvest. Again, just a beautiful record. I'm finally, I'm glad it finally came out on vinyl um, again years later and is now readily available. So if you're not familiar with Harvest Moon, but you love the more acoustic, uh, subdued uh, style of Neil's, this is a no-brainer, an absolute must-listen, and again, perfect for a Sunday morning. Some of the definitive versions of these songs, other than the studio versions, are on Neil's MTV Unplugged performance that he uh, did in the same year, I believe, um, and is really, uh, this whole album is featured throughout that performance. So, beautiful record, love this one for sure. Next on the list, this is probably the most obscure album I pulled out. Um, certainly not an obscure artist, but an obscure album, I think. This is Songbird by Willie Nelson. Um, this came out in 2006 on Lost Highway Records. Unfortunately, I don't believe it's ever been reissued. Um, it's a beautiful record and it's unique in Willie's vast discography because it is produced by Ryan Adams. Um, his band, the Cardinals, including Neil Casal, rest in peace, um, performed as the backing band on this. They actually performed Blue Hotel, so Ryan Adams' track. Um, they also performed Stella Blue, um, Hallelujah is on here, Amazing Grace. So you've got a couple of really choice, uh, perfect Sunday morning covers on this. Um, and just again, uh, following up Harvest Moon, I think this is a, a, a great example of another record that's just really stripped down from an instrumentation standpoint and, uh, and really just lets Willie's vocals shine, which back in 2006, I, Willie's getting old right now, obviously, but back then, like his voice was still really great. And, uh, and I think Ryan Adams did a fantastic job pulling out some of the best nuances of what Willie, uh, what Willie does so well. So check out Songbird, Bird. like I mentioned, not an easy one to find on vinyl. I got this back when it was released. Uh, I was lucky in that I was working in the music industry at that time and, uh, Lost Highway was a, um, 
uh, a client of mine at the company I was working for. And, uh, and I got a lot of Lost Highway releases and still have a ton of my collection. So this is one that I got from the label directly. And I'm very thankful for that to this day. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's available streaming. So uh, if you can't find the record or don't want to pay for the record, definitely check it out uh, and stream that one next Sunday morning. So uh, an easy follow up to that one. This is another one along with Harvest Moon that I thought of right away. And it was an easy follow up to the Willie record because this is Ryan Adams. Um, not on the production side, but actually performing now. This is Ashes and Fire from 2011. Uh, talk about a subtle record. This features um, the great Ben Montench on uh, organ, which is a fantastic vibe all the way throughout this. Uh, I believe Nora Jones also guests on this. Um, some of my favorite Ryan Adams songs are here. Uh, the title track I love, Dirty Rain, Lucky Now, uh, Do I Wait?, just a great album, very um, very stripped down, like I mentioned about a lot of these, because that's when it's a Sunday morning, I'm looking to relax. Obviously, I'm just looking for mostly acoustic bass or piano bass, stuff that's really got a, a chill vibe to it. Next to uh, you know Heartbreaker, which is Ryan Adams' debut solo record, which is obviously fantastic, um, and Cold Roses would be another one that I would point to as far as my favorite Ryan Adams releases, and he's got a lot of albums, but Ashes and Fire is a little bit underrated, I think, in his discography. You don't hear about it as much. Again, it came out in 2011, so it's not one of his earlier records. He's got a, uh, this is midway through his discography, um, but it has always stood out to me personally, as one of his best from a songwriting perspective. Um, and I just love the the really subtle production throughout all of this album. And again, perfect for a Sunday morning because it's real chill. So, all right. If I'm going to go Sunday morning, um, I've got to have some jazz. I've got to have some really clean, um, you know, background music style jazz, but stuff that I still want to listen to because it's got some uh, some some interesting instrumentation to it. This is an album and an artist that I had never heard of um, until I discovered this album. And this is one of those I found in a collection. And uh, I just thought the album cover looked cool. And a lot of times that's the best way to discover any music is just if it looks cool and it doesn't always work out. It doesn't always sound good. In this case, it does. This is Quiet Kenny from Kenny Dorham. Um, this was originally released in 1959. This is not an original, unfortunately. I would love an original, but they're very hard to come by. This is a 1986 reissue, and in and itself is pretty rare. Not an easy record to find. Um, when I'm going to listen to jazz, for the most part, um, I want it to be pretty concise. I'm usually listening to late 50s, stuff like this. I love, uh, you know, obviously following on someone like Miles Davis with the trumpet. I love the fact that um, a lot of what Kenny Dorham does on this record is place notes just perfectly and leave a lot of space. Like, I think those are the two most important things, um, especially in the jazz genre, but really in any music is the, the, the ability to not overplay is so critical, especially when it's instrumental because you don't have the vocals to depend on, right? And this album, from the moment I played it, I knew um, that it was for me as far as, cause there's a lot of different styles of jazz. There's a lot of, a lot of jazz that I don't listen to because I just don't enjoy it. But this really hit the spot. Again, that late 50s style that he brings to the table along with Miles and kind of Blue and that whole record, uh, this fits in perfectly with that vibe. It's very understated. Um, he's got a very delicate touch when it comes to, uh, again, where he plays and when he plays, and that's what I love about it. So um, I, I need to dive into more of, of Kenny Dorham's uh, discography. I don't have any other records from him, so I need to check it out. But uh, this is one I definitely recommend, and again, perfect for a Sunday morning, totally chill, and just really enjoyable, and one that uh, has been on rotation for me for many months now. It's kind of stayed in my high rotation stack. So when I'm in the mood for a, a great jazz album, that one uh, a lot of times will get picked. Next up, this is a local, um, a local musician here to me in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Leon Bridges from Fort Worth, Texas. This is his debut record, Coming Home. Um, this one's got some energy to it. Um, which is not a bad thing for a Sunday morning. Maybe you need to, uh, to wake up a little bit after a couple of cups of coffee. Uh, Leon is one of those that he's, I guess, three albums into his career now. Again, this is the debut. And what I love about him 
is that he has a completely different vibe and kind of aesthetic, even visually, on every one of his records. And I really appreciate that. So if you love, you know, Leon's first record, which is kind of a almost a, a 60s throwback type of vibe, it's completely different from his second record, completely different from his third record, which I really appreciate. I like that uh, artists like Leon Bridges will reinvent themselves and, uh, and make sure that they do not get bored with what they were doing. This is his debut. Like I mentioned, it was not only my introduction to him, but just about everybody's. He went from playing small clubs and bars in Fort Worth and then uh, and blew up. And now he's headlining festivals all over the world, which is just unbelievable. But you can take songs like the title track, uh, Better Man, uh, Smooth Sailing, uh, Twisted and Groove. And again, there's some upbeat stuff on this as well. But I think it's a great chill listen. Really well produced. Again, it's got that throwback vibe, which I really appreciate. Um, and I've seen him live, and he's just an incredible performer and seems like a really great guy, too. So love Leon Bridges, love the fact that he's a local artist and that he's got so much attention now internationally, which is just an amazing thing to see. Can't wait to see what he does next. I'm sure he'll change it up again because that uh, seems to be his M.O. So check out Leon Bridges coming home. Definitely a fun spin and definitely, uh, definitely a good one to my ears on Sunday morning. A couple more on the list. This is an album that I don't own anything else from him in my collection. Uh, Mission Bell by Amos Lee. It's one of those uh, one of those just beautiful records. It's honestly one of those where I don't own anything else from him because I'm like, can he really top this? It's just so great to me. Um, it's very stripped down like a lot of the records I chose here. Uh, the, the lead track, El Camino, is beautiful. And then he reprises it to end the album with Willie Nelson, which is fantastic. Uh, Windows Are Rolled Down, I think, was the single, if you could call it one. I think that's where I originally heard of the album, probably on public radio here in Dallas. Uh, but it's great through and through. Not a bad song on it. Also features uh, Lucinda Williams on a song. So if you like Americana, if you like Ryan Adams, if you like the uh, Harvest Moon type of vibe, like this album really fits that style um it's not completely acoustic but it's mostly stripped down and just a great spin i think uh it's uh i think probably one of those artists for sure where i need to dive deeper this came out in 2011 but he's a very active musician still to this day as a as a, a deep discography so definitely worth a listen of mission bell and, and a reminder for me that i really do need to dive deep and check out some more uh amos lee records because i love his voice and love uh love his style so definitely a great uh, another great spin on sunday couple more and we'll wrap it up this was another Another kind of no-brainer. I'm pretty sure I've featured this album in a number of videos. Sleep Through the Static by Jack Johnson. In my opinion, his best work, and I love his entire discography. He is a, uh, a fan favorite in my household, to say the least, with my kids and, and the wife. Um, I love this album. I love um, how he created a vibe on this that really took his first two records, which are a little more playful, a little more uh, tongue-in-cheek, and he uh, and he really kind of came into his own on this record. I think this came out. Um, let's see, Sleep Through the Static came out 2008. Unfortunately, this is a really hard record to find. I'm hopeful it gets a reissue. It doesn't really make sense that they haven't reissued it yet because it is one of his best-selling records, I believe. Um, you've got All at Once. You've got Angel. Um, you've got Adrift. Songs that are all staples. They are all, uh, you know, to this day in his live set. So it's a very popular album, and it's just one of those that boggles my mind that the label hasn't gone through and reissued it. This is a great pressing. It sounds fantastic, super quiet. One of those albums I'm just uh, so happy to have in my collection because it is so hard to get these days. Um, I got this back when it was originally released, thankfully. Um, and to this day, it's my favorite Jack Johnson record. And that's saying a lot because I've got his whole catalog and I listen to him a lot and had the opportunity to see him live just recently. I've seen him a couple of times, always puts on a great show. Seems like a really down to earth, um, normal dude that just happens to be a fantastic songwriter. And I love that about him. So sleep through the static, definitely a great vibe for a Sunday morning, very chill, very subtle and just great songs. Last but not least a live record that makes it on to my Sunday morning spins. Reckoning from the Grateful Dead. This is a double LP set recorded in 1980 at the Warfield in San Francisco and at Radio City Music Hall in New York. It was released a year later in 81. 
um, one of the more unique dead records um, as far as official releases are concerned because it all is all stripped down and acoustic. And to me, that's really a telltale sign of a great song is if you can strip all of the production out, strip all the extra instrumentation out, boil it down just to the acoustic instruments. And if it still stands up, then you know you've got a great song. And so many of these stand up and are, in my opinion, my favorite version, the best versions of these songs are on this album and are the acoustic versions. You've got songs like It Must Have Been the Roses, uh, China Doll, uh, Deep Ellen Blues, Cassidy, Ripple. Uh, there's a really fun version of Monkey and the Engineer on this, which is a cool cover. So, uh, it, you know, for most people who... Um, who aren't dead fans, there is a stigma that it's all drawn out, it's all jam band, it's all really long renditions, and a lot of their stuff live, yes, has a lot of those components. This one, while it still does have some jamming on it, it's a lot more concise because it is stripped down, um, and again, it's just really subtle, and I love, those ver I love the versions that they performed uh, during these shows. And like I mentioned, there's, there's some of my favorite versions of these songs. So check out Reckoning, even if you're not a dead fan, this isn't a particular, particularly valuable album. That said, I don't think I've ever come across it out in the wild in a collection or anything. It's just not one of those dead albums you see a lot, or at least I haven't. Um, so it may take a little hunting if you want to, uh, want to grab a copy on vinyl, but I'm sure it's available streaming so you can check it out there as well. But I love Reckoning by the Dead. So there you go. There's a few options for you for Sunday morning spins. Please comment and give me some more options. I would love to hear uh, rock, country, jazz, R&B, soul. Like what, what would you choose? What's your perfect Sunday morning spin? Give me some more to listen to. If I don't have them, maybe I'll add them to the collection. Um, I would love to get some recommendations and add to this list and have a, uh, a plethora of comments that will uh, inspire others to sit down at their turntable with a cup of coffee on Sunday morning and enjoy some great music on vinyl. Thanks as always for listening. I will pop up some more uh, videos here on the channel. Stick around. This has been another episode of Talking About Records. My name's G.I. Sanders, and I really appreciate all the support as always. We will see you again next time.